Again, welcome to Database Management System course. In this lecture, we're going to discuss the basic concept of database system and what is a database system, the definitions, and also database professional careers. So this is our main objective, define the difference between data and information. Prepare for your database professional career describe what a database is, various types, and why they are variable assets for decision making. Also, we're going to explain the importance of database design and also outline the main components of a database system. Also, we are going to describe the main functions of a database management system. So first, we start with preparing for your database professional career. And one thing I will start with is that Almost in any business organization, in any business organization, whether I mean medicine, engineering, retail, online business, data is the most variable access. Even an institution, an educational institution such as uh, AIU, again, data is the most variable thing. In terms of our university, students' data is very important. Employees' data is very important financial aid, uh, accounting, almost the data. So every business organization, always a database system must be used. Again, it depends on the size of the company. We may have a database that is almost free, uh, such as Microsoft Access. But Microsoft Access cannot support too much employees or too much data. For example, let's say a banking industry such as Chase Bank or Citibank. This is a bank that is international bank, has over millions of customers around the world. They cannot use a Microsoft Access. Most likely they cannot even use Oracle database system or Sybase. They may have a, a maybe IT department or a computer consulting firm to again develop a customized database for the organization. Uh, most hospitals and big organizations always use a customized database. So whether it's a very small company, a large, medium-sized database management system is a software that we use to manage our data, uh, make it easy to store, to retrieve the data, uh, avoid data redundancy, etc. So let's go through the database career opportunities. One thing also to mention there are many certifications in database career also opportunities, uh, such as uh, Oracle. I quite remember a few years back if you are a certified Oracle database uh, professional, you are looking into making close to six figures or even six figures salary depends on the company that hired you. So database profession is a very rewarding profession, a professional field. So first we start with the job title, a database developer. A database developer, again, is the person or a professional person who is going to design and maybe develop uh, the database system for an organization. Uh, but here we have database developer, database designer. Most of the time, database developer is also the database designer. But again, it depends on the organization that you are working with. So a database developer is to create and maintain the database application. So this is a technical field. You have to know, for example, the type of database you are using. And in this, our modern age now, we have so many different types of database uh, system. We even have the NoSQL data, database system for big data management concept. So you have to have the skill of programming. Again, what type of programming language depends on the business organization, but I will choose a program, a conventional programming language, uh, such as uh, Java, or maybe C++, which will come with a script language. Now it depends on the database system. SQL, which is sequential query language, is a script language. And the reason why I mentioned Java, Java supports SQL. 
so I can write a Java code that can interact interact with a database system using the Java JDBC, which is the Java database connectivity with the SQL script. So I always I tell students, if you want to go to the field of database, Java language is very important. Learn the Java, then learn the Java database connectivity concept with the SQL. Also, you should know the database fun, uh, fundamentals. For example, uh, the tools we can use to design the database, what a database consists of. The next is the database designer. And here also, you should learn how, for example, system analysis. Remember, database is a software. So learning software engineering, how to design a system, uh, the concept and the process or techniques we use to develop a software, you have to have the knowledge of it. So here I wrote down system design, uh, which will be system analysis and design, software engineering, very important. Also the database design, we have tools that we can use, SQL also very important. The next is the database administrator. Most of the time, database developer and database designer will work with a computer consulting firm. A database administrator will work for the company. And its main job, actually, that's why it's administrator. So its main job is to, again, maintain the operation of the database in a particular company. So manage and maintain database management system and databases. So databases will be uh, an organized, electronically organized data. Why database management system is the software that we use to maintain the database. So as administrator, you should have the database fundamentals. SQL is very important. Also, it depends on the vendor courses. For example, if the company is using Oracle, then you have to be very good in Oracle. If they are using Sybase, then you have to be good. The next is the database analysis. Again, database analysis with a designer may go together. So again, depends on the business organization. Here, develop a database for decision support reporting. Query language, query optimization, data warehouse is another tool. Actually, I would say data warehouse is a concept that we should know in any field of database due to, again, big data management concept and also a database architect is almost combination of database developer and a database designer and database analysis so as a database architect you are going to design and also implement a database environment you have to have a conceptual logical and physical design concept you should have the knowledge of it so I'll say a database architect is a database analysis, database designer, and database developer joined together. Again, everything depends on the business organization you are working with. So here you should have the database management. DBMS stands for database management system. Fundamentals, data modeling, designing, SQL, hardware knowledge. As a database architect, you should have the skills of database analysis, database designer, and data, database developer. Always as a database professional, I would say Java is my choice of language, which I, I will learn. Now, the next is the database consultant. As a database consultant, normally you are going to help companies uh, for leverage the database technology to improve their business process and achieve a specific goals. So you are going to consult to a company what kind of database system they should use uh, based on the size of the company, the size of data they are managing, and also the, the type of IT or technology they are using. So the knowledge also is should include the database fundamental data modeling, database design, SQL, uh, almost everything you should have a, as a consultant, you should have a general knowledge in the field. Also, we have a database security officer. Their main job is to implement a security policy for the data administration. Most of the time, data administrators also have these skills. Because since you are maintaining a database for a business organization, 
you should have the idea of how to secure uh, the, the organization database system. So the knowledge here is database management fundamentals, database administration, SQL, data security, technologies, etc. Next is the crowd computing data architect. It's almost the same as database architect. The whole thing here is that you should understand the, the, the technology knowledge in terms of theory and practicals of crowd computing. So we know nowadays most of all the applications are running on cloud system, computing system. So here you should know how to design, implement the infrastructure for next generation cloud database system. Internet technology is very important here. Again, we know cloud computing involve online uh, knowledge. So cloud storage technology. Since we are using a cloud system, data security is very important. Performance tuning, large databases. Then the next is the data scientist. I would say a data scientist is almost different from the rest. Now, when we talk about data scientists, we are talking about analysis, uh, analyze a large amount of data, and uh, more or less like data mining or data analysis. So in data scientists, one of the most important field I always tell students is statistics. Actually, my specialty is data mining and data analysis. So statistics is my favorite subject. I teach statistics a lot. Even in my YouTube channel, I have a full course for statistics and also a full course video for biostatistics. I teach those two classes. So as a data scientist, the basic tool is to be very good with your statistics. Then you move up to the computing. And so in terms of Python, it's a very good language. Our language, R also is based on statistics, data analysis. Uh, SQL is very important since you are going to interact with a database system. But as a data scientist, we always use the machine learning algorithm, such as classification, cross-storing, reinforcement. So you have to have a full knowledge of machine learning, data mining, machine learning, and also data visualization. When I want to analyze a data, the first thing I'll do, I'll make sure if I can be able to visualize the data. Just by visualizing the data, you can again understand the data well. You can even find a pattern in the data before even you start your data preparation and applying the algorithm. So the last section is the, that is one of the emerging field in computer science, which is the data scientist. Uh, I don't see much difference between data miner or data analysis and data scientists. The only difference is, I would say, as a data scientist, actually the word is science. Uh, you apply more scientific process, maybe use a complicated algorithms, uh, also dealing with the big data, uh, Hadoop system, Spark, etc. So this is where I'm going to end with a database professional career. And I will continue with our lectures now. So first we say, why databases? Here we say the characteristics of data in today's world. We already mentioned this. In any business organization, data is number one. That's the most variable resources. And as our uh, world is changing, our uh, process of doing business, even our daily life uh, is changing. We almost generating data every second. Uh, when we go back to 30 years ago, there was no Facebook. So most likely I won't generate a data on, uh, online. There was no, uh, maybe 40, 50 years ago, there was no internet. So I may not even buy things online. Uh, when I'm going to reserve an hotel, they will not ask me for my credit card. And I can reserve, then go and pay cash. But today, you make a reserve of hotel, you have to make it online. Not only that, the hotel now doesn't use a key. It uses a special card, which is encoded. It's a computerized card, which all the information on the card is in their computer system. So anytime you open the door with your card, the hotel know what time you open your door. Anytime you close it, the hotel know all this data is stored. I mean, I can be here and give so many examples why 
data today's world we are living is a data driven society we are anything we do not generate data so so many examples credit card uh, to uh, i'll use my card instead of cash etc so the characteristics of data in today's world again pervasive you can't escape it it's persistent also so database make data persistence and shareable in a secure way so a specialized structure that allow computer based system to store manage and retrieve data very quickly so this is one of the major advantage of database management system it is it's a software that we can use to store our data we can also manage and retrieve our data very quickly and also we can secure our data in the database system so now we'll, let's go through the definition what is data and what is information a data we say data consists of raw facts so a data will be uh, a fact that has not been processed yet or data will be information that has not been processed so here we say not yet processed to ret retrieve meaning to the end user building blocks of information so it's a very simple example i will give if i i'm a worker working for a company the number of hours i work is 20 hours i, I was paid seven dollars an hour seven dollars an hour is just a data uh, my hourly rate or the number of hours I work is a data. But now, if I can process these two data and come up with my salary, then a salary becomes information. It's a data that has been processed. I have a driving license. My last name or my driving license doesn't mean nothing in the driving license. But when I have the last name, first name, address, and the type of license, if I join all these data together, it, it gives me information. So data is a raw fact, not yet processed, and that's the building blocks of information. Now, information results from processing raw data to reveal meaning is, that's information. The information will result from processing raw data. I process my hourly rate and the number of hours I work, and I get a meaningful result of my salary I will make for that week. So it required a contest, a bedrock of knowledge also should be very accurate, relevant, and timely. So introducing the database, we say a database can be shared, also integrated computer structure that stores data. We have the end user data, that's the raw fact of interest to end user. And also we have the metadata, data by data. A very good example I will give you, for example, we haven't reached that stage yet, let's say we create a table to store our data relational database system i may have a field name last name the data type of the last name will be test or i may have a field name salary the data type will be numeric or integer now the data type of that data can be the mental data so mental data is a data by some data explaining some data here we say through which the end user data is integrated and also managed and also you can describe the data characteristics and relationship actually that's the very good one so the data type of a field is a mental data because it describes the type of data we can store or the characteristics of the data so a database management system is a software that we use to again store our data uh, and analyze the data sometimes again for example oracle have a built-in data analyzer or data miner whereby you can also use it to analyze your data so we say the database management system is a collection of programs it's an integrated system analyzer data analyzer included uh, we have a special software that we can use to create our tables we have a special software we can use to query our data inside the same database management system so it's a collection of program manage the database structure controls access to data stored in the database as time goes on we're going to do a lab work on this course which we are going to use access database system so access database system can have a, a table that's a database object 
we have a form, we have a query, we have a report. Each of these database objects does a different function or uh, there's a purpose for each one. So the role and advantage of database management system, here we say it enables data to be shared. So for like a networking system, most database systems support computer networking or online. Uh, also present the end user with integrated view of data. And this would be a very good example of, let's say, Amazon.com. Of course, Amazon have a database system and they have a special application that interact with the user. When you buy things online, we can interact with the database system, check if the item is available or not, and we get results, etc. And it provides more efficient and effective data management. Database management system, the great advantage I would say it, it improves sharing, security, integration, access, decision making, productivity as well. Decision making can be most database management system now. They have, a, as I said earlier, data analysis uh, application integrated. So you have a data, you can analyze it and then come up with some patterns, some information or knowledge from the data. So we have the role and advantage of database management system. Uh, we keep mentioning the end users. So the end users are those again who sit on the computer again using their database uh, to perform their work. So we need a data, then application request. This will be our database management system where data is stored. We can have another end user maybe interacting with the computer hardware. We may have another end user that will request application from the database system. And the database structure normally consists of the mental data, the customers, invoices, and pro products. These are all end users. Again, this depends on the organization, but this is less a general concept that the database manages the interaction between the end user and the database. So we can see we have the end users, different end users doing different work. We have the database system. Then we may have the physical database itself uh, where data is stored. So here we go through the types of databases. We have the single user database. That's what I can use at home with my computer. It doesn't have any network support system. So this will support only one user at a time a desktop database, single user database on a personal computer. Then we have the multi-user multi database. This support multiple users at the same time. So this can be used online or computer network system. Example here given is the work group databases. Support a small number of users or a specific department. Example, you are working for an organization, uh, let's say an institution, we may have the financial aid department we may have the computer science department. We may have a database that will support only financial aid department. We may have a database that supports only computer science. Then maybe the president may have a database that it can basically get all the information from every department. And in this case, we can uh, implement uh, enter enterprise resources uh, system also. So enterprise database support many users across many departments. We also have classification by location. We have the centralized database, which means the database is located in only one single site. Let's say a bank have 20 branches in US. Their headquarters is in New York. They have only one single database in New York. And then the rest of the branch normally interact with only one that database. So that's a centralized database. Distributed database means this bank, 20 branches, each branch has its own database. But all these database systems are connected together. So we can get this access from each other. Then we have the cloud database, which is again using the cloud computing system. This creates and maintain using the cloud database services that again provide defined performance in measure for the database. Classification by data type, 
We have the general purpose database. This contains a wide variety of data used in multiple disciplines. Then we have a discipline specific database. For example, an hospital or uh, NASA may have its own special database system. Uh, um, again, it depends on the operational database designed to support a company's day to day operations. We also have an analytic database. This stores historical data and business metric used exclusively for tactical and strategic decision making. Mostly it's data warehouse. For example, a company may have a data warehouse system and the operational database. So they may say, okay, every week, at the end of the week, by Friday, Saturday, we are going to move all the data we generate for the week during the operation to our data warehouse system. So the data warehouse is where the historical data will be stored. So most of the time, data mining, data analysis is done on data warehouse. I'm trying to find the pattern in the data for the past 10 years, how the company is doing, what is, has been proved, etc. We also have the online analytical processing. This is a special tool for retrieving, processing, and modeling data from data warehouse. Then we have business intelligence, which captures and processes business data to generate information that support decision making. So this is again analytical database. Most database today again have some kind of analytical tools that can be used to analyze the data. Database also can be classified to refer the degree to which the data is structured. Uh, so we know like unstructured data like online uh, activities. Uh, most data, raw data, not structured. When we talk about structured data, it can be a data like an evolutionary database. It, it has been formed like a rows and columns. The number of fields we have, the data type each, everything is organized, so it's structured. Unstructured data means data can be generated in any format. So we have a structured data exists in original raw state. Structured data result from formatting. Structures are applied based on the type of processing to be performed. Then we have a semi-structured data, which processed to some extent. So it's partly structured, partly not structured. One of the earlier technology in this field, uh, that unstructured data, semi-structured, is extensive, extensible markup language, SMO. This represents data element in textual format. Now, why database design is important? Here we say focuses on design of database structure will be used to store and manage end user. Always, not only database, in, in almost every field, uh, engineering, computer science, design, pro when we are building something, the design process is very important because if you don't design it and you went straight ahead to build it, most likely you make a lot of mistake. Even automobile, you have to model it, design it first. So design in IT or computer science field is very important. So database design also is very important. We need to design, and we have so many tools we can use to design our database. Uh, for example, it is said here that a well-designed database will facilitate data management and generate accurate and valuable information. A poorly designed database will cause difficult to trace errors that may lead to poor decision making. So it's almost every software development process. Analyze and designing is very important. Data redundancy, this is one of the main reasons of database management system. Uh, unnecessary store the same data at different places. And this is for the islands of information, scattered data locations. Uh, in database management, we use something we call the normalization process. Uh, we make sure that where we are storing our data is in first, second, third, or fourth normalized form. The goal of doing normalization is to reduce, or if possible, eliminate data redundancy. Then the possible result of uncontrollable data redundancy is again poor data security. You have data everywhere, not organized in one place. And also data inconsistency. You may have the same a record of a customer showing that they have $100 balance, another place it will show that they have $200 balance, 
and there will be errors, data entry errors, data in integrity problems also. So this is even one of the major advantage of database management system. Uh, eliminating or possible reducing to the minimal level, the data redundancy, data anomalies also. So develop when not all the required changes in the redundancy are made successful. Uh, you update a data in one place, but it's, it's not yet updated in another place. Let's say in the bank, branch A have different information, branch B have different information for the same customer. Uh, that shouldn't happen. So update anomalies, insertion anomalies, deletion anomalies. We're going to discuss all this in details when we start the course. So database system, here we say logically related data store in a single logical data repository. We have a physically distributed and more multiple storage facility. And also database management system eliminate most of the file system data inconsistency, data normality, data dependency, and structured uh, problem, dependency progress. Here they mention files. This will take us before a database management technology. Normally, the best way we store data is by storing as a file, let's say uh, a test file or uh, Excel or something. But what will happen is that if I store a data in a test file, if I want to interact with that data, I have to create a special program for it. But with database management system, uh, the vendor have a standard. So if hundred thousands of companies using a database system, the interaction with the database, we use the same program. For example, the SQL can be used, it's, it's a standard script language that can be used to interact with the computer, uh, query, etc. But when you are using a file system, you have to write your own special program to interact. And also there'll be a lot of data redundancy because you are storing this data in different places. In database management system, we have something called a primary key field. The primary key field is the field that uniquely identify each record. So I don't want to enter the same person twice in my file system. If you are using a file, you may end up enter the same customer 100 times. So imagine an Amazon company with over thousands or millions of customers. You don't want to enter the same customer more than once. So database management system eliminates this process. So the current generation database software can store data structures, relationship between structures, access paths. Also, it can define, store, and manage all access paths and components. So this is a, a small diagram showing here contrasting database and file system. So you see the database system, we have everything in one place. All the end users, the, uh, we have the personnel department, sales department, accounting department, they are all can access the database management system information in one place. But when you have a file system, you can say that each the personnel department have its own, they deal with employees, so they have the employees information. Sales department deal with customer sales inventory, they have info. Accounting department deal with accounting. So you can see that they cannot interact with each other. Everybody, every department have its own data that it needs. But with database management system, Everything, all the data is in one unit. We may set up a privilege in a database system, which will so okay, a personnel department can only access um, employees information. Accounting department can only access account information. Now the president of the company should be able to access all the information in the company, all the departments. And so a database management system make it possible. Uh, most of the time, privileges are set in the organization. So it depends if you're an ordinary uh, low-level worker, maybe there's a specific data you can access. Manager may access more. The president maybe may access everything in the company. So a database system environment, we said we need a hardware, we need a software. 
because here we are dealing with software applications. So we need a hardware where we're going to store our software. Then the people are going to use it, the system. And also we should have a procedures, for example, a company user manual to follow. And of course the ingredients for this is the data, we need data. So a database system is an organization of component that defines and also regulate the collection, storage, management and use of data within a database environment. So we need hardware, software, people, procedure and data. And also a database management functions. First, we say the data dictionary management. Uh, data dictionary is storing the definition of data elements and their relationship. This concept can be the metadata. We're going to store all the fields, what is the last name, what uh, student employee ID stand for, etc. We have to explain everything. Then we have the data storage management. This is where we do our performance tuning ensure that we have efficient performance of the system, database management system. We can easily and quickly retrieve information. And we can easily query any data we want from the system. Then data transformation and presentation is one of the functions. Here, data will be formatted to conform to the logical expectation. Also, the security management reinforces user security and data privacy and database management system make it possible. Also, also multi-user access control. We, most database manage, management system come up with a special features which have a sophisticated algorithm that ensure that multiple users can access database concurrently without compromising its integrity. Imagine two employees accessing the same customer information. One employee may change some transaction. That transaction has to be changed instantly for the second employee to also to see, so that we don't compromise the integrity of the data. Also backup and recovery management. This enable recovery of the database after a failure. And data integrity management minimize redundancy and maximize consistency. Also, database access language and application program interface. A very good example will be the structure query language, the SQL. We can use the SQL to create our database objects. We can query our database. And it's a standard language. Here we say the de facto query language and database access standard supported by majority of database management vendors. Query language will let the user specify what must be done without having to specify how. For example, uh, Amazon was okay. Let's write some query to see uh, in New York City or any state which customers are more profitable. Profitable customer means a customer who spent two thousand dollars a month. So we can write a query to see customers that spend over two thousand dollars a month what state in the U.S. do they have from. So instead of going through the millions of records to find out how many of the customers that may spend over $2,000, you're just going to write a query and it to take less than a second you get a result. Also, database communication interfaces. This is database support and network system. So, or even the internet environment, computing, uh, cloud computing system also. And managing the database system, a shift in focus. Uh, these are some few disadvantages now. Managing a database, uh, even to hire a database administrator, it costs a lot of money. Just to hire the right professional person to manage your database system. So, the disadvantage of database system, increased costs. Also management complexity, so you need a highly professional to do it. Also maintaining currency, vendor dependency. So if I buy my database from Oracle, then Oracle will be consulting, maintaining, getting information from my system. 
and also frequent upgrade replacement cycles, a new version will come, upgrade, etc. So the, the whole point I'll say here is the disadvantage of databases then is the cost, the management cost. Management complexity will go with the cost also. So in summary, here we study, in this lectures, we study about what is a data. Uh, here we say data consists of raw fat, uh, usually stored in database. We also talk about different types of uh, database system. We classify them. Also, we talk about uh, database and professional fields, uh, the advantages of using a database system, and also the definition of database system. So this is our first lecture for database management system. And in the next lecture, we will move on, uh, go more detail about how to design a database, and et cetera. So again, wish everybody the best, and thank you. See you in my next lectures.